I'd like to invite you into the boardroom with me. Take a seat and meet my team. We are just waiting for the managing director to arrive. Oh, there he is. He walks in, takes a seat and casually announces, Marilise will be working on this project full time until it is delivered. You will all be reporting to me. By now, I'm feeling pretty defeated. But I tell myself, Marilise, it's okay. This is just temporary. Things will be back to normal soon. Then he drops the bombshell. And I'm happy to announce the imminent arrival of a new director. I'll be making a formal announcement in the coming days. It literally feels like being punched in the stomach. What's happening with Marilise's role? A team member asks. He casually replies, oh, that role no longer exists. Another punch. <laughs> By now, I'm in complete survival mode. I swallow back my tears. I can feel another anxiety attack coming. Breathe, Marilise. Breathe. Paralyzed with shame, I sat there, frozen. I barely make it to the bathroom afterwards, where I cry my eyes out. Then I look up and I see myself in the mirror. I see me, really see me for the first time in months. And I hear a little voice inside me say, enough is enough. I quit the next day. Why didn't I speak up in that meeting? Where was my role? I blamed myself. I felt like a failure. I tried so hard to prove myself, to fix a problem that wasn't fixable. And the harder he pushed me, the harder I pushed myself. For four years, I tried to please him and everybody else. Everybody except me. I was exhausted. My resilience was hanging by a thread. Hands up if you've ever felt like this. In the process of being bullied, I started bullying myself. Every anxiety attack was my body begging me to stop. Why didn't I listen? This was not foolish stubbornness. My so-called resilience had a very dark side. It was a sunny Saturday afternoon in Bredasdorp, my hometown near the most southern tip of Africa. I was 12 at the time and playing outside in the garden when it suddenly hit me, I understood for the first time what happened to me. Almost immediately, a voice inside me said, go to his house now. I panicked, I dropped everything and ran to his house as fast as I could. I was relieved to find him and my eight-year-old sister in the kitchen making cakes. I joined in and watched the situation like a hawk. After what felt like ages, I finally scraped the courage together, say, we are going home now. He begged me to allow my sister to stay just a little bit longer. I stood up tall. I looked him straight in the eye and I said a firm no. We are going home now. My very first roar. 
That evening, I faced the impossible task of telling my parents about the sexual abuse that my sister and I suffered at the hands of a man who was like a grandfather to us. My parents trusted him. The devastation in their eyes were palpable. It broke their hearts. Where was my courageous 12-year-old self that day in the boardroom when I needed her the most? Well, after I told my parents, I blamed myself. I felt like a failure. I failed to protect my sister. I was responsible for my parents' pain. I disrespected an older man in the community. In those days, children were seen and not heard. I was ashamed. The news spread like a wildfire in our little town, and before long, everyone knew. My traumatized 12-year-old brain couldn't fathom, couldn't make sense of it all. I started exercising obsessively, restricting my food, unable to bear the weight of my shame and my guilt. And before long, I had a full-blown eating disorder. This spiral of self-destruction continued for 15 years and eventually landed me in rehab. It was in rehab where I became aware of my inner bully. That voice inside my head that cripples me with self-hatred and tells me that I am not enough. Not good enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough, not thin enough, just never enough. It would take another 15 years and a work bully to force me to silence my inner bully once and for all. And this is how I found my roar. Roar is my blueprint for how I strive to live my best life every day on purpose in my power and with the courage to speak my truth. It is also a four-step process for facing difficult conversations with myself and with others. Let's have a closer look. It starts with clarity on your authentic purpose, which is based on your unique experiences and gifts. We often find our purpose when we're facing life's toughest storms. When I left my job, I was feeling empty and without purpose. But when I thought things were falling apart, they were actually falling into place. I just had to see it, really see it with my inner eye, to own my story, to find the meaning in my mess, to see how the abuse was, in fact, a gift. My experience with different forms of abuse, including self-abuse, throughout my life, taught me that abuse is abuse, full stop. The invisible scars cut deep. It also taught me that the only way you can win is to let go and to move on. If we live in the victim's story, the abusers win. And this ignited a fire in me to give victims a voice. This is my authentic purpose. Do you know yours? Stand in your power. The power I'm describing here isn't a mood or an outfit or a moment or a pose. It is the ability to access your deepest desires, to win your inner game, and to express those desires fully 
so that you can influence yourself, others, and the world at large. Win your outer game. Unfortunately, for many of us, the relationship with ourself is the most toxic relationship that we will ever be in. That voice of self-doubt inside our head that basically lies to us all day long and tells us we are not enough. If we don't stop that voice in time, we start to believe those lies. And once those lies take root as beliefs about ourselves, it can cripple our self-confidence and affect all areas of our lives. Your inner voice, your inner roar, has to become your biggest champion. Why? Because we are who we tell ourselves we are. I am. The two most powerful words in the English dictionary. Whatever you put after I am becomes your truth. So why not start telling yourself, I am enough? Believe that you are enough. Turn your thoughts and your feelings and your words and your actions into your four superpowers. Prioritize you, your mind and your body on your list of priorities. I would like to imagine you, uh, I would like to ask you to imagine yourself being thrown overboard into deep, choppy waters. The boat is no longer protecting you. Your only vessel is you, your mind and your body. And you have two choices only. You either sink or you swim. Build your resilience muscle, your mental and your physical stamina daily so that you're always ready to face life's storms so that you always have the strength, the confidence, and the courage ready to face life's storms. Always ready to roar. I'd now like you to think about a difficult conversation that you are avoiding. So a conversation with someone else that you're just not having for some other reason. What will it take for you to have that conversation? Would you like to try my four-step raw process? OK, let's do this. First of all, what do you want to get out of that conversation? Are you clear about that? What is the best possible outcome that you can get from that conversation? Now, picture the other person. You can close your eyes if you want to. How do you feel about that person? How do you feel about yourself? It is really important before you go into any conversation to have positive regard for yourself and for the other person. Have a mindset of, I'm OK, you're OK. Right, so let's say you're about to go into the conversation. You have just expressed your position. You have said, this is kind of where you are. This is what you would like to get out of the conversation. And the other person is responding with some resistance. Step one, recognize. Recognize what they're doing, what they're saying. Recognize their behavior. Recognize your own thoughts and feelings. Regulate yourself, stay calm, stay present. Step two, observe. See the other person, really see them, but also see yourself, really see you. Remember, I'm okay, you're okay. Now you'll go backwards and forwards, right? Because you will then respond by step three, assert. So you'll either state the impact of their behavior you will ask them a question. You will reassert your position. There are so many things that you can respond to. But the key here is to stay in your power zone, to hold on to your power. 
Know your rights and respect the rights of the other person. So when you're ready, go to step four. Redirect the conversation towards win-win outcomes. With Roar, you can live your life on purpose, in your power, and with the courage to speak your truth every day, to face those difficult conversations with yourself and with others head on. You are your own superpower. If you can dream it, you can be it. You just have to believe it. It's time to find your roar.